Hey friends, in this video, we'll go over Docker images, Docker containers, and Docker files in FastAPI. We will learn about how Docker images and containers ensure consistency across multiple development, testing, and production environments. This is because the same Docker image and really the container can run identically on any system that supports Docker, reducing the it works on my machine problem. Now, before we can start this tutorial, the very first thing you need to do is install Docker on your personal machine. If you have not installed Docker, I will leave a link below where you can download Docker, whether you have like the Mac Silicon chip, Intel chip, Windows, it doesn't matter. I will leave the link below so you can install Docker on your machine. Now, once you set up Docker desktop, you will have something like this where we have containers and we have images. Now, an image is like a blueprint of what your application will look like. A container is going to be a self-contained environment that is going to hold all the dependencies for your application. Now, here I already have a virtual environment already set up for my application. So all I really need to do to get started is I am going to create a new folder called app. And inside app, I'm going to create a new file called main.py. I'm then going to say pip install fast API and uvicorn. And now we can start creating our application. However, before we get started, we also want to go in here and say new file underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi. This is how we can create packages in Python. So without doing this, our application won't know this is a Python package. It'll just know there's a Python file sitting in a empty folder. So now that it knows it's a Python package, we can start building our app. And just like always, the very first thing we're going to do is need to import all of these dependencies. And I actually need to do a pip install for SQL Alchemy. All right, that'll get rid of all the yellow lines under all of these dependencies. I am next going to create our application with a database URL, which goes to a SQLite database where we just set up our engine, session, local, and base. Next, we're going to create our database dependency with our dependency annotated, which is going to be used for our database dependency injection. And then lastly, we're just going to do it all in the same file. We're just going to define a simple user model where we're going to create a class of user, which inherits base. We're going to create this database table inside our SQLite database called users with an ID and a name. And then we're going to initialize this database the very first time this application is ran. Now, the next thing we're going to add is just a app.get user where we can get all of the users by running a db.query user.all. This will fetch all of our users and we'll be able to instantiate a database by using our dependency injection. And then lastly, we want to be able to do an at app.post with our user where we can create a user, pass in a name, run a background task, and then use our dependency injection for our database. And really what I'm doing here is we're just instantiating a new object, saving that object to the database. And then I'm running a print message background task, which is right here, which is just going to print to our terminal, the user, and then the name of that user is created successfully. All right. So now that we have this, the next thing that we'd want to create is a requirements.txt file. And we can do this by saying pip freeze greater than requirements.txt. Now, when you do this, we're going to get a requirement.txt file with all of our dependencies right here. And we need this for our Docker because when we have our image and we create our container, it's going to want to know all of these dependencies so it can create the exact environment that we have running on our machine. And now for the last thing that we need to create, we can say new file and we need to create something called a Docker file. Now a Docker file is going to hold all of the instructions for our image to be able to create that Docker container. So the very first thing we need to do is tell Docker what version of Python we want to install on our container. So I'm just going to say from Python 3.9. The next thing we need to add is the working directory inside the container to the app. Now this is how we set where the code is going to live inside the Docker container. 
we then need to copy over the requirements.txt file from our local directory to the app directory in our Docker container once it's built. So it knows to download all these dependencies. And this dot just means from the same directory. So we can see that requirements is going to be in the same directory. Now, after we get the requirements.txt, we need to do a pip install of our requirements.txt. So pip install dash r requirements.txt. That should look fairly normal. The new changes we're adding is this no cache directory. This is to tell Docker that we don't want to cache the installed packages to save space. We want to reinstall all these dependencies each time we run the new container. And lastly, the dot upgrade. This is going to upgrade all of the packages every single time this is ran to the absolute newest version. So if we look at requirements.txt, we have specified versions inside here. But in our Docker file, we're overriding this to upgrade all of those dependencies. Now you could remove this and it's going to install the exact version that's in your requirements.txt file. But for this tutorial, I'm going to leave this upgrade inside. We then want to copy the entire app directory, which contains our main.py file and any other files in the future. But for us right now, it's just the main.py file from our local directory into this app directory that's inside our container in the future. So we're going to say add to our container everything from our app. And now for the last one, it's our command, which is going to be uvicorn main colon app. But instead of saying like dash dash reload, we're going to define our host to be 0.0.0.0. So this binds the socket to all network interfaces, which makes the server accessible from outside the container. We then want to specify the port, which is the listen on port 80 inside the container. So this needs to be like understood as best as possible. And Docker has its own little, uh, like think of it as it's like own little world. And we need to be so specific about what we're telling Docker to do, or it's going to try and customize some things for us automatically. So this is why we want to specify the port and specify the host inside the container. Now, just to kind of show you that we're not running this on our personal machine or inside our virtual environment, I'm going to just go ahead and delete our V, E, and V. So what we can see here is we just have our app, which has our init.py and our main.py file. And if we scroll all the way to the top, it's going to be like, hey, you don't have any of the dependencies running. We have our Docker file, and then we have our requirements.txt. Inside here, the very first thing we can do is docker build dash T fast API Docker, and then a dot. Now Docker build is a way for us to create an image. We're going to tag this image as fast API Docker. So if we go ahead and click enter, it's going to download all the dependencies that we need for this image to be able to run successfully. If I open up our Docker GUI, we can see that fast API has been added our fast API Docker inside our image. Now we have no containers. Remember images are like the blueprint while container is the actual environment running. So to create the right container, we can say Docker run d for detach if we don't do the dash d for detach it's going to just take up this entire terminal and keep printing everything to it almost like a cpu logging kind of thing we want to name this container fast api docker container and then we want to say we want to attach it to our 8080 and then fast api docker is the image we're creating this container from so when you do this we're going to get this long unique url and if we go back into our docker now and we go to container we can see that we have a container of fast API running. It last started seven seconds ago. If we click this port, we can see that we are going to have an application running and we don't even need to specify the port because it's inside the Docker. It's doing its own Docker port connections. If we go into slash docs, we can see our application is right here. If we create a user and we call this Eric and we say execute, we'll get Eric user created successfully. And then we can say get users where we have our name and Eric. Now again, this is living inside our Docker. So if we go back in here and we say stop, and then we go back into our application and we refresh, it's going to stop. And that's because we have our image and our container. If you want to rerun the application, you do not need to come in here and do this entire Docker run detach functionality again. You can just go right inside here, go into your containers and click the start button. And now if you click this URL again, our application is going to be back up and running. 
Now, Docker allows us to be able to do a lot of things. It allows us to be able to create these isolated environments that Docker is able to contain. Now, what's cool about Docker 2 and why it's extremely popular for fast API and Python applications is you can grab this image, put it on some cloud provider like AWS, Azure, GCP, and it will create the container based on your image, which means now you can deploy applications live on a production server based on an image, instead of trying to figure out how to push all your dependencies on a remote server somewhere else. All right, well, I hope you were able to learn something in this video and I will see you in the next.